Hi, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing. We're starting again, I guess. Uh, it's been a while since I've done this, so let's uh, let's get into it. Anyways, uh, let's talk about in tattooing how deep is too deep when you're trying to apply needles to skin, and what are some of the signs that you can see if you're not doing it right. <laughs> Anyways, let's go. <laughs> Okay, now that that's over with, I, I guess to start, I apologize to everyone who's been supporting and uh, stuff. I've had some health stuff happen over the past few months. That's kept me away. Also, my energy is a little bit lower right now, but I felt like I should have been doing this the whole time. So anyways, we're gonna start doing it now. Um, how deep is too deep when you're doing a tattoo? Uh, so normally, if we go to, I don't even know if this pen's working very well. It's been a while since I used them. There we go. When we're looking at our skin model, right, 2D skin model here, our goal is to bypass the epidermis, right, and deposit that pigment at the top layer of the, of the actual dermis. Now, the epidermis inside of itself, right, is, is really small. <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh my gosh, was it 40 micrometers? Uh, is that backwards? Where is this one? Is it that one? I don't know, somebody who does the writing, I haven't done this forever right now, so <laughs> if it's a little bit messy, I apologize. It's about 40 micrometers thick, which is incredibly small. So when we're thinking about how far that our needle actually has to go into the skin, a lot of people debate about a specific throw, right? So when they're talking about like, oh, when you're running your machine, your cam should have this and da 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 da. And so your cam settings are how far that the needle can travel, right? Uh, and it, and it's, it's cyclic, right? So it's how far it's gonna be moving up and down, right? Our throw is different. Our throw is how far it comes out of the tube. Out, whoop, the tube. Still can't multitask, that's good. So when we're thinking about how deep is too deep, these two together can kind of be a, something that people put in place of actually trying to understand what they're doing with the skin, right? They're like, oh, you just use a 4.2 and you just, you know, hang it out and it'll get in there. But that's, that's not actually good technique, right? When, when you have something that has a fixed amount of space and you stick it in past where it's going, you're just increasing trauma, right? If our, if our skin, <laughs> the little model here, is very, very, very thin, like around two millimeters in thickness, right? and we have something that is four millimeters, right? <laughs> in, in distance and thickness or like whatever you wanna say, right? That's going down past wherever this is. Yes, you are going to get better penetration of color, but you're also going to increase the amount of trauma that the body is seeing, right? So this is bad. <laughs> but only under given circumstances. More often than not, what I see now with people when they're representing this idea between cam and throw being, being the end all be all, this is just, this is what you do, is people are mixing up skin acoustics, right? And how to apply a stretch correctly and replacing it just with burying the needle at you know a really long cam with a fast running machine. So usually with our stretches, what we're trying to do is tune the skin, right? The tighter, if the skin is loose and a needle is striking it, it's gonna be able to travel further up and down, right? Because it's just gonna have more weight to give when that needle's coming into contact with it. So when we actually like tune the skin, when we stretch it, what we're doing is we're making it so that it's not traveling as far up and down and the needle is going to actually be able to go into the skin because it's going to reach like a maximum point where it can't stretch anymore, right? Normally, if we see a needle coming and it's unstretched, the, the actual needle coming out of the tube is going to be able to go so far that it's going to reach like an apex where it'll finally be able to break through, hence why I'll need for a longer cam. Um, and then you, you have to have your throw out to accommodate that as well, right? So when we actually stretch the skin correctly, what happens is the needle doesn't have to go that far. So it, sometimes you see as people running these really heavy cams, like three, eight, four, five, whatever the hell they're doing, 
and they sh actually have a good stretch, <laughs> those needles just go blowing past the skin and they create an actual blowout, right? Beyond that, if you have somebody who's very light-handed and actually isn't burying it, even though they have like this really good stretch, you'll start seeing that spider webbing where you have a line and you'll see the capillaries pick up and things just kind of go off, right? It's usually gonna be a sign that you're too deep as well because the vascularization that we're gonna see in most people is gonna to be towards the lower layer of that dermis that they're interacting with. So, that's identification, right? You don't need a really big cam to be able to do a tattoo and you don't need a really long throw to do a tattoo and it, has to be, it doesn't have to be running at like 13 volts to do a tattoo. What we're trying to do is actually tune the skin, whoa, I guess that's settled. Uh, we're trying to tune the skin so that our needle is coming up and down at the same speed that our skin is going up and down as well, right? What happens is then as the needle's coming down, whatever cycles per second or stitch rate that you've got, and the skin is coming back up to meet it, it will decrease the amount of force required for the needle to actually penetrate the skin, right? So it, it, it makes it a lot easier to do what you need to do. Now, when you're, when you're learning this, a lot of people teach it with, this is how it feels, right? There's a tympanic type of application that you're supposed to acoustically understand what's going on with your hand, but that would be like you not having hearing and putting your hand, just will randomly make you deaf, and um, put your hand on a bass, I don't know, speaker, and tell me what song it is, right? It, that can be, to some, I guess, extremely difficult. So. It's, it's in, my, in my mind, it's difficult to try and express exactly what is right or what is wrong when you start using tactile senses, when realistically, all we need is our eyes, right? So first off, let's go over a couple other things here, right? So one thing to look out for if you're going a little bit too deep is gonna be cobwebbing, right? If that's happening, usually, you'll probably have a half decent stretch, right? Um, but, you're gonna be seeing the pigment going down, your needles are going down a bit too far, and uh, it's, it's gonna start cobwebbing out. But this can also be like, we'll go deep, whoops, start to do a D and an E together. Deep, and also too slow, uh, which I'll do a video about oversaturation maybe today and then put it out next week, I don't know. But uh, cobwebbing is gonna be a big thing, right? If we're gonna see how deep is, to, uh, yeah, so bad, bad things to do, so impartial stretch, if you're going to have that, what you're going to have is cracked lines. Uh, cracked lines are probably the, the easiest one to define, right? Your stretch isn't good. You're going to see, so you're using like a seven round, you're going to have lines that, right, are all broken. They're cracked. It looks like a broken sidewalk. Um, this is because the skin isn't ver is, is variable, right? It isn't consistent all the way across. If you don't have a good stretch, maybe you're not pulling along tension lines, which you can watch that video here, um, then you're gonna get needles hitting at different rates. This can also be due to like really shitty needles and it's not brand, brand does not matter, right? But visually inspecting your needles, you use cartridges, pull the back out or depress the plunger, right? Look at them, if you're on bar, eye loop, both of them, whatever. Make sure that they're all actually sitting at the same level at the bottom, <laughs> that they don't have twists, snarls. And uh, something I see a lot actually with more modern packaging is lint that is collected like paper, pulp fiber, that's collected inside of the needles right even before you start, which will cause an, an kind of a spreading action happening inside of your needles so they don't, they don't actually look like they're going into it a nice tight point, right? Um, <clears throat> so the crack lines, this is usually just like, that's your stretch uh, or needles. Um, and then if we're gonna see, <laughs> I like this, this is especially with mags. This would be chops. <laughs> and so what you'll see is serrations, like, like actual chop marks, where the epidermis has been literally, like this is your skin, you'll see cuts right out of it. <laughs> this is due to ha bad hand motion, the needles are going out way too far, and you're literally like karate chopping <laughs> the skin with a mag or a flat sideways, which is just creating small incision lines. So this is like too high a voltage. <laughs> uh, too high voltage, it's too tight of a stretch. Uh, bad technique. <laughs> this is just like, 
this is this is really nasty i mean sometimes you can't help it like people who have severe edema or even just some expression of edema inside their skin where it's swelling their skin can be pulled so taut that it's almost like overstretching a balloon and when you go in to make a mark the skin can split um, but if you do a proper like i don't know talk beforehand get a medical history you should be able to avoid that stuff um this one especially like if your needles are going in too far you can get chopped skin with cracked lines and cobwebbing happening happening off that same thing and we'll see this a lot actually with like stipples uh if we see people doing stippling incorrect their machine is running really fast and they're pulling and whipping their lines across the needle actually ends up getting caught in the skin right and when it does that it creates the larger orifice which allows more pigment into it and as it pulls out it ends up oversaturating the skin i have to do oversaturation next time so we don't forget <laughs> uh, as it pulls out the skin, it'll oversaturate. And when it does it, you end up with some spots where you'll have less pigment available because the machine's moving so quick. You'll have inconsistent pockets that are doing it. You'll end up cobwebbing off some of them because there's so much pigment shoved into the area. And then you also end up with chops inside the skin where the skin is actually like literally pulled apart along those lines. And when you do that, this stuff takes forever to heal. Absolutely. Um, We'll do signs. Boink. Um, uh, here's another one, right? If we see um, just blowouts, blowouts or bruising, um, those are uh, as well something to look out for. Like if you start seeing bruising immediately after you start tattooing somebody, you're probably going too deep. <laughs> and you're going so deep that you're damaging like the vascularization very deep in the skin or under it, right? So this usually comes out with blowouts and stuff as just bad stretching. Uh, and you're just, you're just hanging that shit out way too far. <laughs> um, so these would be like the top four things to look for. When, when you start getting into more nuanced things, you have to pay attention to some, some, some aspects in tattooing that maybe aren't prevalent in your mind when you're, when you're doing it, right? Like location is going to be really, really important with this. Some skin is more elastic than others, right? like the back of the hands, collarbone, neck, head, any of the pivotal joints, stuff like that, is a lot different than some of the more fixed skin, like on the bicep, shoulder, parts of the back, etc. right? So when you have that hyperelastic space, you're going to have to stretch it differently because your needle is going to want to work against that quite a bit. And usually what people will do like along a spine, if they can't get a good stretch, you hang it out and you bury it and you make sure it blows out rather than fades away, right? But that's, that's not necessary. Usually just postural changes can, can help that, as well as understanding those, those tension lines and how to work with them. Anyways, first video back after the health break. Hopefully you liked it. And if you're new here, welcome. This is about what you to expect. <laughs> we got swag and merch. I don't know. Like, follow, subscribe, all that stuff. And um, I'm going to make some more videos today and start putting them out. So, hope you guys have a good day. We'll see you soon. This is Ryan for Better Tattooing, signing off.